You are listening to Proof Text, a Glossa House podcast by Dr. T. Michael W. Halcom, Dr. Frederick J. Long, Dr. Mario Melendez, Dr. Jennifer Noonan, and J. M. Smith. Welcome and enjoy. Shalom. My name is Dr. Jennifer Noonan, and welcome to the first episode of the SLA Insights, a new weekly series in Glossa House Prove Text podcast. The series is going to focus on bringing SLA insights to the teaching and learning of ancient languages. So for this first episode, because it's the first, we're going to do some introductions. I'm going to introduce myself, I'm going to introduce the podcast series, and a couple terms specifically related to SLA or second language acquisition. So to start off with, again, I'm Dr. Jennifer Noonan, and I'm a Glossa House author. My book, a handbook of second language acquisition for biblical studies just came out this last year. Um, I grew up on a farm in northern Ohio and did my undergrad degree at Malone College, now Malone University in Canton, Ohio, where I studied biblical studies, Bible, educational psychology, and music. And as part of my music education, I did a certificate in piano pedagogy where I learned how to teach piano well. And since then, I've learned and seen the correlation between music teaching and language teaching. So I've learned a lot about how people learn these types of skills through music teaching, and it's applied to language teaching in a way I never would have guessed. And in future episodes, I'd really like to address some of those issues. Um, Once I finished my undergrad, I went to Ashland Theological Seminary, where I got a master's in church music and a master's in biblical studies, Old Testament. And it's there that I first started learning the ancient languages, Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. Also, as part of my study at Ashland, I did uh, an independent study with David Baker on Hebrew pedagogy, where I learned a little bit about teaching techniques and did some reviews of different teaching textbooks for Hebrew. And so that was my first exposure to language teaching as a discipline. From there, uh, I took a couple years off to do some adjunct teaching and then started my PhD at Hebrew Union College. There I studied Hebrew, Biblical Hebrew. I studied comparative Semitics, linguistics. So I studied Akkadian and Syriac and Aramaic and so on. But I also did some second language acquisition classes at the University of Cincinnati that dovetailed with my studies at Hebrew Union College. So my dissertation brought those two together in uh, focusing on a clinical trial of two different approaches to teaching biblical Hebrew grammar. Now, while working on my dissertation, I also met my husband, also a student at Hebrew Union College, and we were married a couple years after Uh, I graduated. No, just one year. Sorry. One year after I graduated. My husband is Benjamin Noonan. He's the Dr. Benjamin Noonan, the author of Advances in the Study of Biblical Hebrew and Biblical Aramaic that just came out a couple years ago. He's also written a number of other articles and a a couple books and so on, but that's probably the thing he's most well known for. So he and I do quite a bit of academic collaboration We also have a daughter who's in middle school. She's artistic, musical, uh, creative, great sense of humor, also very strong-willed, so she keeps us on our toes. We currently live in Columbia, South Carolina, where we're both teaching for CIU, Columbia International University, Hebrew, Old Testament. I also teach a class on women's leadership. I also do a little bit of adjunct teaching for Old Testament online for Liberty University a little bit of piano teaching still as well. Um, And I also like to do cooking and gardening and traveling and hosting people. So that's a little bit about me. Um, If you'd like to introduce yourself or if you have any comments or questions, suggestions for future podcast ideas, please um, let me know. You can email me at jennifer.noonan at ciu.edu. So Beginning of introductions, that's a little bit about me. Now a little bit about the podcast series. Again, we're gonna be focusing on SLA, SLA Insights, the the title of the series. And SLA, as I said, stands for Second Language Acquisition. It's a subcategory of psycholinguistics. 
it really came into its own in the 1980s uh, with creation and the input hypothesis. Again, some future material for a podcast. Um, and the focus for this, this discipline is researching how people learn languages, how they adjust, particularly their second language, which tends to be similar to, but not exactly like learning your first language. And so thus extrapolating from that, how best to teach languages. And now the research has primarily been done on modern living languages, but the principles are usually broad enough to be applied to the learning of ancient languages. So this podcast is going to be focused on how do we take those SLA insights, principles, and apply them to the learning and teaching of ancient languages, which have been traditionally taught by uh, traditional methods, like the grammar translation approach, for example, for a very long time. However, over the last 10 to 15 years or so, there have been a greater interest in, in the second language acquisition principles and how they might apply to ancient languages and biblical languages. And so this podcast is designed to help those who are interested in SLA to incorporate it into their ancient language teaching. So giving tips, tricks, uh, insight, what the research has to say about how people learn language best. Now with that introduction, I also want to introduce the term second language acquisition and break it down just a little bit. So second language acquisition is, as you might have uh, guessed, learning your second language, but not just your second. It could be your third, fourth, fifth. We just use second language as a quick and easy way to do it, but not learning mother tongue. That's going to be slightly different, although, again, a lot of overlap, but it, we'll see how that works uh, in the future. So SLA is the academic field that studies how people acquire languages and how to apply that knowledge to instructional contexts. Now within the field, uh, second language acquisition can have a very specific meaning, that of referring to learning of a language in the context in which that language is used. So for example, learning French in France. Um, and that's to be contrasted with foreign language acquisition, which is learning a language outside of its natural context. So learning French in a US high school, for example. So when we look at ancient languages, we're necessarily talking about foreign language acquisition in the technical sense, because we no longer have a natural context for those languages. There are no living speakers. There's no country you can go to to learn those languages. So we're learning foreign language. However, the term second language is broad enough and often used generally enough to incorporate all of language learning that is not your mother tongue. So we're going to use second language acquisition in this broader sense to indicate learning a language in any context. And again, it's not just your second language, but any language beyond your mother tongue, your first language. The other part of second language acquisition is the acquisition part. So we're going to be talking about how people acquire language, and that is being able to use the language effectively for communication. And that's something different from learning about the language in a scientific, analyzing, mastering, grammar, syntax, phonology, being able to describe how the language works, memorizing paradigms, that sort of thing. So we're talking about language as a communicative tool to be able to understand the ancient texts. Now keep in mind that communication is not just two people talking to each other. Communication is anything you do with language in this case, speaking, listening, reading, writing. So when we talk about ancient texts, we're talking primarily about reading, but that is a, an act of communication. Listening to the text, hearing what the original author had to say so that you can understand and interpret and hopefully in many contexts communicate the meaning of the original text to someone else in a sermon or a Bible study or um, in an analysis of a original Latin historical text. 
So while learning about a language definitely has its place and linguists, we need linguists, we need people who can analyze and understand and uh, scientifically study languages. The goal for this podcast is going to be acquisition and being able to use the language. How do we best learn the language in such a way to use it for communication? So in the immediate future, the next few episodes of this podcast, we're going to be looking at language proficiency. What does it mean to be proficient in a language and how does that help? And how does that help us in our understanding and our interpretation of these texts? Because if you've acquired the language, you not only can access it more quickly and efficiently, you can also do it better. And so we're going to be looking at that aspect of language learning, in this case, language acquisition. So we're going to be focusing on language acquisition. And also, just as a brief overview to help you understand where we're heading, we are definitely going to be looking at some uh, theoretical material, looking at SLA, insights that we can draw from SLA and the theory and the research that's been done there. But we're also going to apply that material to uh, the teaching of these ancient languages. So I want to have a practical aspect of it as well. So taking that theoretical idea and what would it look like in a Greek classroom? What would it look like in a Hebrew classroom? So um, again, just an introduction here for the new series. I'm excited to be learning with you. Welcome to this new podcast. I look forward to learning more about SLA with you as we apply the insights to ancient languages. And again, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or would just like to connect, please feel free to drop me an email, jennifer.noonan at ciu.edu. Have a great week. Interested in growing your ancient language skills but not sure where to start? Glow's House can help. From illustrated readers and short stories to lexicons and grammars, Glossa House offers a variety of resources for beginning, intermediate, and experienced ancient language learners. Head to glossahouse.com today. Glossa House, language resources for the global community.